Segue to my one. I was about to ask. <laughs> no, it's not. No. Um, although from a narrative point of view, I guess that would be uh, an interesting one. Uh, but no, after after uh, Japanese Randall and Hopkirk deceased the game <laughs> from Shadow Fox, um, I I think I should again react to the the free before me, and we had two mascot related games so I should probably utilise my one from the list for that uh, or ma- mascot platformer um, uh, it's it, it features the blue rat oh and mm-hmm. it's because it's okay so there's a game that was on this list for a very very long time in my mind Um, but its importance has waned a bit but there was a game that made me a Sonic fan and then there was a game that made me a Sonic fan again and the second one of those is the one that is the game that I've played the most on that franchise I've played it on multiple systems I've completed it on multiple systems in three different decades at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, I can, it's one of those games I can just leap into at any point, and it's Sonic Adventure 2, uh, more specifically, mm. Battle version, because I, I got it on the GameCube. Um, it, when I first got it, it was just this absolute breath of fresh air. In terms of what I'd previously experienced, was it perfect? Well, no. Um, I'm aware, as I have continuously said, when it comes to Sonic Games, the community, there is the big wheel that keeps turning of opinion. Sometimes it's on top. Give it a couple of years, and it's apparently the worst thing that's ever been done to the entire franchise. And then give it another couple of years, and oh, actually, it wasn't that bad after all. And another couple of years after that, oh my god, what a classic that was. Whatever the case, Sonic Adventure 2 for me is the start of so many important things in my life that it's it's very difficult to explain how important it is. But everything about it, the fact that you have the two so- the two stories and they're both strong. They both it one's not you know, um, taking a back seat to the other. You could quite easily, whichever one you pick, and it is a free choice, there's no wrong answer there. You'll have an enjoyable time. It has variety. I personally, I personally don't mind the treasure hunting levels at all. 
In fact, I like them a great deal. Um, as long as people aren't <laughs> blasting you around with donations and co. <laughs> But even um, that, I think, just because it was still fun. You oh still no, fun that, was, that. that was fun. That was fun. There's a reason that game was picked. It was because there was a lot of variety. This is, we're talking about the, the the two charity related streams I've done in relation to that, in, in relation to crowd control and on the convention too. Um, there's lots of different things you can do. There is you know, character development. There is there is story. Um, again, there's a lot of there's a, there's a big chunk of darkness that's just casually thrown in there. That is just like Jesus, you know what? Um, which they make worse in shadow, obviously. But yeah, so yeah, yeah, there was this. Oh yeah, there was this this secret project, and um, this this project shadow, and then there was. Eggman's grandfather scientist, the man he looked up to, and he did lots of great and good with the world, and then something happened, and he's there with his uh, grand, his granddaughter, who's terminally ill. <laughs> his terminally ill granddaughter, and oh yes, the world government sent the army up there and murdered everybody. <laughs> It's just, a, it's just like what? It's just a regular day for the it's government, a, really. It's a, re- it's a regular, it's a regular day for the the Guardian Union, the the equivalent of the UN, but run by America. Is sent into space. They kill everybody. They kill a bunch of people. They kill the terminally ill child. It's not. It's not even. Well, it's not even like an accident. Shadow, the cu- the, the oh, cutscene yeah. is the cutscene. Like the guy's there, pulls it out. And just... Well, it was a different time after all. This all took place like. <laughs> After, you know, fifty years ago, 50 when you could in, in, when, when you could well, shoot there a child, was obviously there wasn't times and regulations games. back then were way different. Then, <laughs> fifty uh. years ago, <laughs> for God's sake, what would it even be on? It wouldn't even be on beer back then. For God's sake, <laughs> it, was just, so it, it just it just really there's a lot of justification on Shadow's side. He's right to feel you know angry and betrayed. Yeah. Um. And he's trying to he's trying to do with his in his mind the right thing in his mind because and there's, there's complicated uh, there's complicated aspects to what's going on. You've got an additional law with the with the master Rimble, even though it's just like oh, if you played the Sonic Adventure at this point, you forgot for God's sake. <laughs> Why have you smashed the emerald, you pillock? Hit the <laughs> hit Again. Robotnik's thing instead and let him just make him drop it. What are you doing? Um, oh no! Oh no! Exactly. <laughs> um, there's there's a bunch of but it, it explains a lot about Eggman. You know, yeah. it, it raises a question which has still not been answered, which is okay. That was his grandfather. A terrible thing happened to his grandfather, and was that the catalyst in terms of making Eggman as he is? In terms of this rebellious scientist, this this bad man because he's getting in his in some way a, a sense of revenge um if so what you know is it his is it eggman's mother or eggman's father it was it was it them that started things off because there's this big there's this missing link there as to what's going on he in the credits he speaks in such glowing terms about gerald so really emotional to, yeah. for eggman Someone it's, he looked up to, and yeah. yeah, he never wanted to destroy the world. He wants to conquer it, sure. Yeah, but and he I mean, he, he he himself does ask questions like, "Is that what he really meant to do? Is is that what Gerald really meant to do?" Eggman, he has to sort of like, like rethink things, and we don't get something like that until the end of Frontiers. In terms I, of an, like a big emotional side of that yeah. character um, we won't spoil that one though <laughs> unless, no, you count, unless you count Lost World with him absolutely losing his <clears throat> shit which is one of my favourite moments and going like super cold stone cold <laughs> killer <laughs> Eggman I, I, but, I'm looking forward to the future of Sonic if they do keep on with the frontiers at least because if, <laughs> if, if they keep up this kind of track of m- learning more about what's going on because there's a yeah. story to be told 
it's I, I appreciate what's what's happened there at the same time that that game never grabbed me never grabbed me as something i wanted to buy that, that that's fair i to, to be honest i'm i'm with you in the fact that i think sonic adventure 2 battle which is the only version i've played is by far my favorite 3d sonic yeah um it was also the uh you know i bought my gamecube specifically for this game um it was because the it was a deciding game. factor in me getting a GameCube. I can tell you that now is because I could play Sonic on it. Yeah. You know, when Sonic Adventure DX came out, it was like, great, now I can experience this one, but I bought the GameCube for battle. Mm. I mean, that was the case, same case for me, where when I heard that Sega was out of the console market, I was like thinking, oh, great. What am I going to do for my Sonic fix? Oh, there's Sonic Adventure 2 on the, on the GameCube. Mom? Get me a GameCube. <laughs> also, at the That's same mother, time, you're going, I require you're going, a GameCube. <laughs> you're also you're going Sega on a Nintendo. My young mind does not comprehend this. What Thanks must this I, be like? I think we had Sonic Advance One before Sonic Adventure Two. Yes, Battle, we did. So I'd have gotten over that shock by then. <laughs> oh yes, but I didn't have one of those. So yeah, see, a... previous example of wow. Um, but again, it's not. You've got Chow Garden. Mm-hmm. Which is great and far better than the one you get on um, Adventure. Yeah, DX, I'd agree with that. But all the way down to the characterization, the fact that you've got the the character's music is in all the different styles, bits and pieces like that. I mean, it, like I say, it's it's the first game I ever bought a soundtrack to. In fact, I'm looking at that very soundtrack right now. It's pretty much at my eye level. So, like Adventure Two. Soundtrack. The um, is it Tokyo Pop? Is it Tokyo Pop? I think it, I think they Hang released on the second, vocal the vocal yep. album as he right? stands um, up. <laughs> no, it's it's the oh my god, is this washed out now? We <laughs> get the Tokyo Pop soundtrack. Approximate running time seventy eight minutes, um, but it's not all necessarily all the all the vocals. Mm. Um, it's, but it's a, tra- most, it's a track that have level. some sort of vocal in them, but it's not you know the vo- not vocals if you see what I mean. Okay, so it's not like a complete soundtrack that one. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. It's um. It's it's very speci- it's very specific. But I I as soon as I heard that music, I went out and I hunted one down. I was like, oh, do they do video games? They do. Oh my god, can I get this from somewhere? And turns out I could. And what a weird thing. How weird life is that the musician that did that and that performed all that music that I enjoyed so much is now my friend. And that's just that's just the weirdest thing and also the most marvellous thing. So yeah, Sonic Adventure 2. We'll play it anytime. And I can't say that about many Sonic games. But Sonic Adventure 2 will always be there.
to Radio Redux, part of the LMC block on Radio Sega. Tune in every Sunday at 7pm for more. Uh, d- d- yeah, I definitely agree with that pick. It's, I, I, lo- I do love that game so much, and I kind of want to go back and do the game. I, the one thing I want to do is go back and try, maybe do like a few extra mods for the graphics to give it a little bit of a upgrade, make it easier to play. I think so Sonic Adventure this... 2 race, yeah? <laughs> Sorry? Sonic Adventure 2 race, yeah? I would be happy to do that, genuinely. Challenge! Challenge! Yeah. Challenge! The, gaunt- the gauntlet has been thrown. Challenge! All of you! <laughs> but then, how do we factor the Chow Garden on. into that? Yeah. 100% Chow Garden. <laughs> no, I don't care about yeah. Chow Garden. I do. <laughs> okay. fine, you, fine, you stay there. The rest of us will continue the race. <laughs> <laughs> Where is our fault? Oh, he's... He's busy petting a he's busy petting a chow on the head. Yo, I'm trying to force sh- a un, I'm trying to force a unicorn down its throat. It's, uh, <laughs> uh, well, moving on to my number three. My number three is probably one that most people just go, "Why? Why haven't you got a better game from this genre in here?" And the answer is because this is the game I go back to time and time again as the game I relax to. It's a game I can just put on and I will have fun. And it doesn't matter when, where, you give it to me, I'll just have fun with it. Um, it is, unfortunately, slightly longly titled, though. Uh, Serious Sam, The Second Encounter. Now, I'm specifically picking The Second Encounter uh, because that's the one I played the most. And also, the, I it's the one I enjoy the most because I prefer the variety of levels. It's not all set in Egypt. You've got Mesopotamia. You've got... Um, I can't remember what the middle ones are. Yeah, no, I've completely forgotten. But it's like... It's a different <laughs> but type they're of memorable. Architecture. memorable. Extremely memorable. I can well, picture it, them right of, now. It, it's kind of a mishmatch of... I, I can visualise it. I just can't remember what the era it's supposed to be. Because um, they're like different... That You basically travel through time. The final era is like me- your medieval period. The middle one is kind of this. Um, it's kind of temple-y, but it's more blues than it is the yellows of Egypt. Oh, it's going to bug me now. But um, no, I, I Serious Sound the Second Encounter is just one of those games where you just let me play it, and I'll just go, cool. I'll just run through the game. Serious difficulty. Give me unlimited ammo. Let me just have fun murdering everything. It's um, the Mayans. Yes, it was the Mayans, wasn't it? Uh, there you go. Um, Tikal, <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know it adds it adds couple it adds couple new weapons, not many, but they're weapons that kind of shore up the weaknesses the game had. Uh, it introduces the sniper rifle for long range shooting, which technically you can do with any weapon because none of the weapons have any accuracy difficulties. They're all one hundred percent accurate at all times, um, apart from the shotgun because shotgun. Um, but it's just really useful that you can zoom in on the far it off enemies and pick them off before they get to you and cause you a problem. And then the other major new weapon was the flamethrower, which was, you need a close range weapon for a lot of enemies? Here you go. See all these bombers? Flame them all. They'll go, oh no, I'm on fire. Let me stop a second while I put out the fire. Oh no, I only have two health. Afterburn kills me. Kaboom. Um, there's also the serious bomb, but I never use them. Um, it also has one of my favourite themes um, in all of gaming, which they did bring back for the most recent entry. Um, but its name is simply called The Corridor of Death. And it is the music for the final level of the game. Um, but it's one I love. I just love. And they did a remix of it for Serious Sam 4, which is very nice. Um, and while, you know, the later entries have still been good, I've enjoyed them. Nothing's ever going to... Serious Sam the Second Encounter just hits the right spot between comedy and gameplay and just being genuinely fun. And even better, I can, if I want to, just bring friends along and we can just do the same, gun everything down. I think I've played that one with you. We've gone through one of them together, I'm fairly certain. I think we went through the first encounter. I don't think we've gone through the second Uh, encounter. So, Um, for the benefit of everybody listening out there... It is not a shock to us that a serious Sam game is on our part. Oh, list in, at all. No, oh, God, no. It's a shock. It's this high up. <laughs> it's, a shock. it's. It's. Is it um, really? 
It shouldn't be to you, Earth Shadow Fox. has been trying oh, no, to get fact. us to play and stream and do anything with the Serious Sam series for, I think, 15 years now. Well, you've played it, <laughs> haven't you? A, it's been a long time. Uh, hang, hang on a sec. I'm pretty sure I've at least got you to play the games. We've played. We've oh played, yeah, we, we've, we've all, we've we've all, all devilled it. it once. Yeah. yeah. In fact, I think we all played it on Xbox Live, didn't we? Possibly. I've only oh. played. I've only played the Steam versions that you gifted me. Possibly. Yeah. But pretty much Possibly. all. I of think. Us I think I did gift everyone it on Steam everybody, as well. Everybody. Yeah. Everybody has received from Earthart. This is how Most much I love the serious series. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going. I'm just going into. Set. I'm, going to, I'm going to Steam. Serious. Oh yes. There yeah. You go. Okay. I have. 3 BFE, Classic First, Classic Second, Classic Revolution, Fusion, First Encounter, the HD. Yeah, you know, I think you've given me the entire okay, God their collection other than four onwards. <laughs> uh, to be fair, the Fusion ones were stuff they gave away free, which were like, um, hey, here's a launcher for all of the games from one launcher. So you can have like random playlists and mega mods for the games and stuff. There's a, there's an awful lot listed down in Steam for me if I just put serious. Yeah. <laughs> an awful, awful lot. But yeah, and it's a series I love. But again, it, it's this is my go to. I want to relax for the evening. Sod it. Let's put serious Sam on. Just blast things to hell. Yeah. I, I, I don't know what more you want me to tell, tell you about this game. Um, and yeah, it's. I think my only. My only little quibble is that it's a little bit harder to get on the consoles than it is on the PC. The PC is the easiest version. Although, you know, if you're someone who wants to play VR, you can play the entirety of First and Second Encounter and I think Three in VR. I'm not entirely sure why you would want to because I feel like that is one game where you really do will will get sick. But hey, it's there for an option. Uh, if you want to see, if you want to see what that would look like, um, there's actually a clip on the Last of oh, the Continued you, YouTube channel uh, of, of, of mixed. I knew Viney was going to bring this up. Of mixed reality of Earthart with um, a gigantic gun, <laughs> which is holding in real life, mowing down things in in the game. It it it, it uh, puts Sasha to uh, yeah. To shame. Sasha is uh, would be jealous. Mm-hmm. So um, to, give, to give the story behind that, um, uh, I work for a games company and we actually got contacted by their head of music um, to ask, could we trade keys? Because they also do another game that I, that I really like called The Talus Principle. And so we said, yeah. And then um, uh, we noticed that um, they were coming to EGX that we were at and we were both showing off VR things. So we asked, hey, could we trade one another? Can we get some of our guys onto your VR game? And you guys can come and try um, Serious Sam VR at EGX. So we did. And yeah, there's a, there's a video of me <laughs> doing that, just that. A video of you having some fun. Yeah. I try. Uh, think, I believe the guy's name is uh, Dem Jam. I will need to properly look that up. Um, but thank you very much for that because it was very enjoyable. Uh, but yeah, Serious Sam. I, I love the series, but the second encounter is by far my favourite. No questions asked. I will say one thing that is quite interesting is there's some differences between the original version and the HD version. Because the HD version took out any of the gravity weird gravity mechanics that they did include in the original. It may be worth playing the original one as well, but play the hd one it's nicer looking so yeah that's that's my number three all right well uh going going from the crazy world of serious sam to a more slightly less crazier but still fun world that i'm going to next with uh uh, a totally different genre shift as well going from a first person shooter to an adventure title and uh uh, like uh, pretty much like the last uh, at the time the last breed of like uh, like the pseudo point and click adventure kind of like style and it's one of those games that I always put keep in high regard and I would always like to pl- replay if I've ever wanted to play through an, uh, uh, a, a story narrative game uh, like that because it has really good writing, really good character, uh, well, 
really good characters, specific, specifically uh, the main character, uh, and the world that they're in is just interesting to kind of like uh, to know more about. And that's Grim that Fandango. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's it this is a masterpiece. It is. It's like like when I played the PC version so many years uh, like over 20 years ago now. Uh it's like I was mesmerized with how it's like, I was it was uh it it's uh, logic in its puzzles and whatnot were were uh, baffling at first, but once you knew it and once you know how to do it it's like Oh yeah, this is fun. This is this is great to go through. It's great to get the interactions of the different characters after uh, solving different puzzles, and then uh, how it was kind of like it was a a noir kind of like uh, story telling to uh, in in a uh, fictional uh, in, in in a in a world where the dead reside uh, in this purgatory world. Uh, you know, just uh, you know, all all heavily inspired by um, uh, the uh, Mexican uh, Day of the Dead kind of like uh, kind of like motif uh, with uh, their character designs and uh, culture and stuff like that um, being a, a major influence of it. And Manny Calavera, the char- character you play off, the man has so much charisma and you know, great uh, co- uh, comedic kind of like. Uh, uh, kind of like writing to him, it's like you you can't you can't be mad at the guy, even if, even with some of the uh, the comments he makes towards certain other you know some characters and whatnot, uh, or even make it him say char- uh, say to characters because uh, it's all dialogue you know you got like dialogue choices and stuff like that to help uh, prog- progress story, um, but it's always an adventure game I always love going back to like uh you've uh, there's plenty of other adventure style kind of like games you've got like obviously um the this the 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 kind of like the telltale uh games uh particularly of like uh sam max and uh, even th- before then obviously sam max was uh uh, something uh, was not from Telltale, but they had like a you know, you know there was uh, there's Lucas Lucas Arts Luca, yeah, as well. Lucas yeah. Arts, so the right. same studio did, did that. Yeah, I mean Lucas Arts were basically the point and click masters. Yeah, um, effectively. And Arts, Grim Fandango they, was their swan song, basically. It was. It was their swan song. That was the last game that was done by uh, by that division of like a point and click uh, series, and then by sheer by sheer. Uh, happenstance and like a lot of encouragement and probably a lot of money to do so as well um tim schaffner's uh kind of like studio double fine getting the rights to remaster the game and re-release it to i mean granted it didn't set the world on fire not many i don't think it really got that much uh in terms of like attention or like uh, you know uh sales after its re-release or its hd remaster but by God, it's a game that everyone should play. It real it's it's a game that if you like storytelling and you like interesting characters and you like interesting worlds, uh, then Grim Fandango has got it. It has got it. I mean, granted, once you've played it one once before, what's the point of returning it? Uh, what's the point of uh, replaying it? No, it's like uh, there is a point to replaying it because you want to relive it. You want to play f- play for it again and experience those characters again and want to experience the story again. And that's what I'm always like with uh, Grim Fandango more than any other adventure game. I mean, I've played, like I said, Back to the Future. I've played Back to the Future. I've played um, uh, the, the Life of Strange series as well. But they have nothing compared to what Grim Fandango gave uh, for that genre. And I will always go back to it any time. Yeah, I I do love Grim Fandango, and I'm slightly sad that I haven't finished the HD version yet. I finished the original version. I I will say you can see a lot of the um, style from Grim Fandango in Psychonauts as well. But yeah, no, I mean I think I prefer some of the Monkey Island games to Grim Fandango, but that's. I mean, again, same team, and I think I just prefer the theme. But Grim yeah, Fandango it's, it's is the theme. Grim Fandango. I, I, I totally agree. It is the theme for you. Yeah, but that's not to diminish Grim Fandango at all. I love Grim Fandango. 
Um, and it's it's just it's very. I, I think the only thing that slightly deters it for me occasionally is the controls feel a little bit clunky, even the modern controls slightly. Um, but it's still it's worth going through, definitely. Have you have you done this one for your stream, Turbo? Yes, I have. I did, uh, the, the, you can check the entire archive. It's up on the LMC archive uh, uh, on the website and the YouTube channel. All four years. It's uh, separated into the four years that... I, that, uh, that. I really like that that's a nice way they separate the chapters of it and give it yeah. distinct... And also just, you know, the various things that happen. It gives it some nice... It gives it a lot of variety in the places you go to and stuff. I'm trying to remember the mechanic's name and I've forgotten it. Oh, uh, Glottis. Glottis, yes. Glottis, I think, yeah, is my favorite. He's a laugh. He's my favorite character, bar Manny, because Manny has to be your favorite character. Oh, yeah. You know what? I'm trying to think if that's actually up on the website. I know it's on the YouTube channel. It's, it's, it's on, on the YouTube, YouTube channel, channel, but I'm, not, I, I'm wondering if it's on the website, actually. I'm, I'm going to have to double-check that. But it, it goes back to what you were saying about developers and publishers sitting on franchises. Mm-hmm. That's not something you can say about LucasArts, actually. In the games, well, in terms of like their their the games from that era yeah. of of that studio, they've tried to um, make sure that it's available whenever the op- things are available whenever the opportunity arises. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, LucasArts is now owned by Disney, but yeah, you know, we've had remakes for the first two Monkey Island games, and then the other two are just available on Steam now. I think so. Yeah, the the whole series is playable, uh, and include... you've, we've, yeah. from our point of view at the time of recording, it's not that been long ago since Sea of Thieves announced the Monkey Island crossover. So it's true. Things oh, yeah. are things are being kept alive in in various different ways, even though they're obviously well, now belong to the mouse, cranking yeah, out even, magic even, and assembly drawing whimsy. But even then, <laughs> um, you know, uh, Manny's had cameos in the telltale games that yeah. do have connections to LucasArts because that I think it goes back to again you know whether or not it's sold very well and we obviously don't know that off the top of our heads what it did have was a lot of critical acclaim yeah yes when that remastered came uh, out. its original release was highly acclaimed when it was first yeah. released and it's still held in quite high regard exactly mm-hmm. um, if nothing else just because of the storytelling yeah but no, aye, Grim Fandango, uh, a, a real shining, uh, uh, shining gem in the adventure game ser- uh, genre, and uh, uh, definitely w- for for a good time uh, was the swan song to that era. But uh, thankfully, it's not forgotten. Thankfully, well, I hope it's not forgotten. So it lives on <laughs> in your <Ironically>. memories. <laughs> Yeah. So what, so what lives, so what lives on in uh, your memory, Shadow Fox? Then uh, I'll be honest, I haven't touched it. It's uh, no. I was trying to segue. Yeah. Oh, he, 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 right. he was setting you up. He's at it again. He's, He's at, at it again. again. The old pro. He's far too professional. <laughs> He's far too professional for me. No, I mean I'm gonna I'm gonna rewind it a bit because I'm gonna link a little bit back towards Earth. Oh. And a little bit towards something that we're currently doing on LMC. <laughs> Which, if you've been following uh, LMC on Twitch and YouTube at the current moment, or previous moment, we're currently going through Halo 2, and um, we're deciding that it's not quite as good <laughs> as Halo 1. He's a diplomatic... That's a very polite way of putting it. He's a diplomatic way of putting it. I was going to say, you don't need to tell me that. <laughs> yes, because uh, he's done all the I mean, Halo games as well. Those have got to come out on the on yeah. YouTube at some point. But uh, yes, Halo but, 2. Great. Yes, Halo 2. Great. Which is why it might be shocking for me to say that he's in one of my favourite games of all time. But not necessarily for the game, or at least certainly not for the campaign in itself. When it came out, the campaign was... I, I would say inoffensive until you got to the end, and it didn't end. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. What can you say about the what you can say, you can say about the main game? But well, it's inoffensive <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> until the end. Until the end. 
damned yeah, I mean, with faint praise. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. I mean, it's like you can. I mean, like you can blame Halo pretty much for like the regening health system that every game pretty much had after it, which is a mechanic which is understandable. For well, it allows people to the when the makers of the game to know how much health you've got to work with. It's no longer it's balanced for that and nothing else. No. No walking in in what with one heart and trying to avoid combat or play sneaky style if you know you can just back away for a bit. But it more comes down to the time when Halo 2 was released. Back then, Xbox Live didn't exist as we know it today. Xbox Live didn't have a central hub. Halo 2 was the central hub of Xbox Live. Friends lists, previous game players and all that were things that came from the framework of that game essentially it when xbox 360 came out with a proper xbox live it copied so heavily and the fact was was that game was so instrumental in how i approached online games for the longest of times it it was the social media that we have do you want to play a game well just go online find your friends and they'll have friends who are playing games and they'll get their friends and you'll be playing in a 16 player lobby with people who you have no idea who they are where they're from if they can even speak your language but you're all just there shooting guns at each other and having a laugh i spent a week sick uh, away from school and at the same time there was someone on my friends list of the name bbq boy I will call him out now in case he's out there somewhere. Hasn't been online in eight or so years. <laughs> God rest <laughs> or something. He's, he's now barbecue man. W man, <laughs> yeah. For an entire week, we just spent time playing games and exploring the multiplayer maps, looking for Easter eggs, not even like playing the game as it should have. Halo 2 was a game where I tried my first hand at machinima and video editing and recording and all that stuff learning how to super bounce which is such a crazy thing in my mind to think that on certain levels if you crouch into an area slowly turn the controller to the right keep holding forward and then just fall in a particular place you skyrocket into the sky zone and on certain maps like the blood gulch map there were points you could continuously hit and you could basically super jump across the entire map what purpose did this serve? None at all. But if you needed a crane shot on Zanzibar, if you went into the window and cr- broke the glass, crouched into the window, rolled off, and you got on top of the building from bouncing back up, it gave you a different point of view. And these were all things where it's like the game itself <laughs> was somewhat of a framework for everything else. And the first experience I had with, I guess, competitive gaming and casual gaming in a multiplayer perspective. And you never stopped breaking games since. I, no, I never stopped breaking games. I never stopped playing multiplayer games either, really. <laughs> no, the, it was definitely the genesis of online gaming uh, from the console God, perspective. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, in terms yeah. of like PC, it's been ongoing for years from like, uh, you know, the old... Uh, it was in Quake. Like Quake and, uh, and whatnot. Ultima Online. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so um, yeah, console. For, uh, this was the great that this was like Halo Two definitely is more remembered for its online footprint than it was for the single player um, component. Even though the single player component was to some people it was good. And it was, oh no! And at the time, certainly it, it was yeah, definitely good. It was, uh, and at the time, very infuriating <laughs> to have it on a massive cliffhanger like that. Yeah. Um, but it all led to obviously, a, in my opinion, a decent end with the third entry. Yeah, and I didn't really, I didn't experience the Halo 2's multiplayer until the 360 era, because when it was made backwards compatible, backwards compatible with the Xbox 360, I was playing it a lot more. Mm. Uh, the online mode on there. Yeah, I, than I, I was yeah. on the original Xbox. Uh, so, I was more Halo 3 than I was Halo 2. Yeah. I mean, Halo Two. It never went. It never went out of style. People were still. I mean, there was. Um, they were having a. I think was it when the servers went down. There were still people hanging on. There was like a game lobby with like six, this last sixteen remaining Halo Two online players. Yeah, and they were still live for at least I think another 
week or two weeks yeah like after co- th- after the cutoff date consoles was... the consoles are staying on and it was just a last man standing <laughs> that that's the real ma- last man standing uh, right playlist now, yeah. that was happening that day <laughs> and of course I mean, it continued on with things like we got like shows like red versus blue out of halo as well which evolved extremely during the halo 2 period Okay, that was a, just a magical time for games and online, and it's a thing that you don't have now. It's it's a it's a kind of magic that was that's sealed in a time capsule. Yeah, I, I'm not. I mean, I kind of knew a good chunk of your list before this, and I'm not surprised this particular game holds memories for you. Oh hmm. uh, yeah, it. Like I say, so the jump from Halo One to Halo Two, just like because it like Halo One multiplayer, I. We had LAN parties with Halo 2. Yeah. Straight up, like, there are, like, eight of us, three consoles, three TVs, all just... We'd have, like, um, we had, we had races. Races, like, two two players uh, running through the campaign who can beat it on Legendary first. And it was such a, such a period. But, and, I'll say, and I still have the multiplayer as it roughly was in the anniversary edition they they kept a lot of the original um gameplay from faithful so even in so you can go so you can now play uh halo one multiplayer with those massive magnums you can play halo two multiplayer with your dual wielding smgs which was considered extremely powerful and the old bxr meta god oh, finding well, there's little glitches that just were required to be good online <laughs> no yeah halo two as it was back in the day, absolutely a brilliant game. So yeah, it, cer- it certainly was a catalyst. Yeah, in yeah. terms of changing what people thought of video games and bringing that multiplayer experience. I'm trying to think if there was like a racing game on e- early Xbox. Uh, Live Project Gotham it- Racing. Yeah, was it Project Gotham? I that was so. also Possibly. that was also one. That was also a- it must have been Project Gotham. But it was either that or the first Forza, or a second. No, Forza, Forza no, came after Project been... Gotham Racing died. It must have been. It must have been PGR. Um, yeah. But that that's another one of those games that sort of really started the push to online multiplayer being a, a, a real mainstay. Again and again, we go back. It sort of goes back to Ocarina in a way. It's a. It's one of those games that yeah, is changed. the industry changer. Yeah. That said, the campaign's trash. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, well, you can't. Your version you, of the yeah, campaign. Yeah, my version yeah. of the campaign. <laughs> absolute trash. You can't have a perfect ten out of ten that lasts forever. Yeah. Well, you can't have a game well, session that lasts forever. Apparently, the, the, uh, <laughs> you can't have a game <laughs> session that lasts more than ten minutes. Oh dear God! We'll round off my number three. Or everybody's number three, and I'm gonna. I am also gonna tie it back to Earth Hearts. Yay! 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 Indeed. I'm gonna tie it back to games where you can relax. It's rather different. <laughs> I'm just my, my version of relaxing being mass murder of alien species. Yes. Maybe not the best yes. of things relaxing. But but I was gonna say. I think mine's more relaxing than. Yeah. Uh, well. You know, uh, yeah. Uh, this, is tr- this is true. In, in everything in their own way. I think this. This has been. This. If if you put all the the freeze together, this is your relaxation episode, because. Um, we're also gonna be. It's the first time on the any of our lists. We are going. To the arcade as well as the home. Oh, ooh, ooh uh, yes, the a, that arcade. Is, that is Has a good point. Else... I, I hadn't even thought about arcade you, games. Yeah, you hadn't thought of the arcade, and that's why they're all dead, John. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I went to the one I, we had here for a bit. I don't have any <laughs> arcade games in my top five. I do in my top twenty. There was literally a picture uh, of you in their business model. And now look I will I will I will say this. I did put in a hundred quids worth of uh credit into one machine back in the day. Yeah. And uh you know, they that that's uh that w- that was a machine that was supporting my local arcade for a long time until I eventually said, you know what, I need to cut back. <laughs> yeah. And then it and then it died. You were the yeah. reason it collapsed. <laughs> oh no, I I also had one. I also had one of those. There was a machine. There was Off Road Thunder. 
which was on Eastbourne Pier, which was where the my my arcade was. Is, is that is that the same guys who did uh, Hydro Thunder? Yeah, same series, same oh, right, Thunder okay. series. <laughs> the fact that I could just remember like the the exact order in terms of to get, <laughs> to get through the menu to get to the the, the level I played it's like off road Thunder. What you want to play? Rally, airtime, double barrel. Start your engines. <laughs> um, but I put a whole heap of money into that, and because I just, I just really liked play. It was a really, really fun game. But then I realised no one else is playing it. <laughs> when you come back and you fo- when you find that you're still top of the table, and he's like, there must be people better than this than me. And it's like, why the hell am I still top of the table? Oh, nobody else is playing it. This is a game designed specifically come- for you. <laughs> Then you come back one day and it is not there anymore and you sort of nod at the empty space and the, the marks on the arcade carpet where the thing used to be and you sort of nod, it's a, nod, it's a knowing nod to yourself of understanding. Anyway, uh, it's not talking about that, no. But yes, an arcade game that everybody knows as everybody has played it in one form or another that has also made its way to home consoles uh, and is still very much in demand today. (laughs) Daytona! (laughs) It isn't that! (laughs) It's it's the other one! (laughs) It's the other one! Um, It's the other popular. It's Outrun! Yes, Um, Outrun, what a, and we're, we're talking. I thought you were going to swerve and say Sega Rally for a second. Sega <laughs> Rally Championship. Yeah. I mean, no, they're he, all three of going, them are Sega. Sorry. He was yes. going. Oh, yeah, yeah. Effectively. I mean, you could you could even take it one further. There's that mini championship one they did. That oh. was hella enjoyable too. Yeah. I remember that one. What? 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 Sega Rally Kids. No, it's no, like Sega Rally that? Kids. There was a specifically. <laughs> yeah, like, I was going to say mini. Like, it's like, mini what are you talking about? A mini, like... like a mini car championship. One. Uh, oh, 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 like a, as in the car, I mean, the, car the, the mini. mini. Yes. The mini... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there was also Sega. There was also Sega Rally Pocket Fighters. That was a, that was one. <laughs> um, no, it was honestly the sheer joy mm. outrun. Give. I mentioned this on the previous one that we were on uh, when I talked about Crazy Taxes being one of those ones that you can just pick up and do whatever and yeah, outruns yeah. in that same category. Because you can just, at any point in your day, in your life, you can just sit down in a cabinet if you have the opportunity to have a sit-down cabinet experience. Or alternatively, you can sit down at home if you've got the opportunity <laughs> if you've got and it downloaded have, somewhere and have it downloaded somewhere I was going to say this, this is the 2000, 2004 yeah. version we're, we're talking, talking about, about right? Outrun 2 Super Outrun Digital slash 2006 Coast to Coast slash Special hmm. Edition slash Outrun Online Arcade yeah that so this is, this is uh, the, the legacy of Super Not, Digital yes, right here yes yes Sol, wherever you are, we salute you and your team for the glory that you did in terms of keeping this game and bringing it to new audiences. And thanks to Ferrari as well, because those guys were kind of cool about it, so, which you wouldn't have expected. Um, you hear lots oh, of tales about them being just, quite uppity. Uh, yeah, but that's... They were they were actually amazing. They were actually amazing when, when they they broke the FIA rules for us. Ah, <laughs> they, yeah, oh, they they completely broke the FIA rules. Ah, oh, they broke oh, in, a very, in a very rules in a very Italian way. Where when I suggested on the phone, oh maybe we can come over and see. It was like, well, that would kind of break the FIA rules. So yeah, let's do it. <laughs> it doesn't doesn't matter what they say. It doesn't matter what the FIA say. You can come along. It's like, oh okay then. <laughs> sure thing. Screw the law. Do you want this? Do you want that? Do you want to go here? Uh, yeah, yeah. weren't expecting any of that. Oh, that's okay. You can go here, here, here as well. You want to go into the F1 where they're currently work? They're currently working on the cars in this sealed environment. <laughs> you want to come in here and just, just stick around and just say hello to everyone. And what was this? Oh, what's this sealed? This sealed barn, practically <laughs> air conditioned. Oh, this is where all they they keep all the FXXs. 
the limited edition. This is Michael Schumacher's one. Yeah, there you oh. go. Just, just come in, just lean against it. It's fine. Do you mess about with all the museum items? <laughs> it's like, it's like, um, uh, yeah, but are you sure? It's like, yeah, it doesn't matter. Hey, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but there's the experience of Outrun. The music, the blue mm. skies, the just drifting carefree, the yappy girlfriend in your ear if you're playing the bloody heart attack mode. <laughs> we won't leave you the F alone. You've made the mistake. I'm going to physically assault you now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, while you're right. driving at 200 like, yeah, miles an while hour. While you're driving, dude. Oh, you've crashed. I'm going to hit you some more. What do you mean you're concussed and bleeding from the skull? <laughs> it's, it's, honestly, if we do a li- list of like, like the true villains of video games. <laughs> the Hang girl on, from Outrun. on the list. <laughs> the girl from Outrun. Who is never satisfied, never, never satisfied, will be. spousal abuse. It's the whole thing. But that, it's like that experience to, 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 to drift around, it's, it's fast, it's carefree. There's always something ahead that you're trying to get get past with the rivals. There's just little goals for you. There's the, the replayability, the massive replayability with the branching paths. The crazy stuff that sometimes happens if you do really well that just comes out of nowhere and surprises you. Um, the the ultimate challenge. You could do a small path. You could just go where life takes you. You can just go for a casual drive and not really care about the time. Just do a do a path, do a whole. You can sit down, just enjoy the entire fifteen course or whatever it is. The um, where you just do all of them, yeah, yeah, back, it's to, a, back to it's, back to it's, back to it's back. It's the, con- the continuous. If you, yeah, if you do the continuous mode at the end of that, you are not tired from it. Mm. It's 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 just endlessly replayable. You can do things your own way. You can. There is a competitive element to it. There is if you want the little to. tricks and tips that you can teach yourself to be better. And if you Learning don't which- care about that. And it doesn't matter. The game doesn't care. It's just there for you to enjoy yourself. It's learning which music. corners to drift and which ones yeah, to turn. The music. Yeah, which little bits, which little bits of ground that you can skip over if you know what's if you know what you're doing. What things to avoid? Always oh, a bump here. There's a dip here. There's a hey. This looks like you can. This looks like it's going to be tricky, but actually no, you can. You can hit it at full pelt. That just that one space, that one space in the Las Vegas area. I can't remember the name of the actual one now, but there's the double. It's like you turn left, and there's like a little tunnel, and then like a double right hand, double right hand are out of it, and you can do the whole thing flat. And it's just little moments like that. I rem- I absolutely remember the joy I felt when I realised, wait, I can do this. And every area is a little bit different. The ground's a little bit different. That area is wet, so you've got wet, you've got wet tarmac, so it slides around a bit more. So you start going, hey, you know, I want to go to this area, but oh no, this actually, this area was really pretty, and this area is really tricky with the with lots of chicanes and and tight bends. This one's just a massive you know, heap of straights. The bloody redwood forest. We're going through these massive freaking trees where there's there's tunnels through the middle of these massive trees, which is a takeoff of some stuff in in America in some very in some parts of there. There's just all manner of things, and then you get to the end. You get to the end. You just feel satisfaction. You feel that you have achieved. And then there's some sort of bonkers thing. Like, I don't know, congratulations, you've succeeded, you've won. Here, we're going to launch a space shuttle for you. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that <laughs> it's one. It's <just> like, what? <laughs> what is this? It's just amazing. An arcade, an arcade experience, you can just sit back in an actual car position as you drift around. I eternally played that with just one hand on the wheel. Yeah. 
you just no. you just feel like you just want to put your arm back around the, like lean it on the seat or on the side of the side of the cab and just, <laughs> just, just, just do no, crazy it, stuff really it, whack the reel round I totally broke an arcade you cabinet you broke too much right. if the, we, no, we had it, a meet up at, in London um, at where the Namco place used to be and they had one they had an out, out run cabinet um, I can't remember if you were there if I don't know it was it was it was when when um, Jay when Blake was around. Oh, um, it was that Maybe. era. Yeah, and there was one down there, and we were all just taking turns. And then <laughs> I was in the middle of, uh, I, I was really nailing it in, of course, my trademark British racing green Ferrari F40, yeah. which I always <laughs> pick. I always pick for the sheer irony. And I was just going around. I was I was really flinging the car around, and it, all of a sudden the wheel just kept turning. <laughs> <laughs> the wheel, and I was like, "It ain't supposed to do that." <laughs> I still try to turn it backwards, trying to get the car to do anything. Just, 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 like, it's, it's, ah, uh, race, okay. Racing, racing wasn't um, meant to come off and be plugged yeah, back in, right? Every, everyone sort of everyone was like, sort of crowded around, just went, "Ooh, ah, ooh, ah, yeah," and I, I ended up going like. Uh, Oh no! I I missed the checkpoint. Like really, loud, really comically loudly. <laughs> I missed the checkpoint. Oh, game over. The race is still going. <laughs> oh, game over. Oh well, isn't that a shame, everybody? Yeah, is that a shame? No, let's Kevin's just like, keep get moving. The, get the fuck away from this. <laughs> but outrun. Oh, Any time. Right. I literally one of the reasons I mended the three sixty. I got the three sixty mended. Apart from obviously uh-huh. everyone demanding I did it. But I have a, a run on line arcade on there. Hmm. So yeah, it's still yeah. I think it's, it's still on mine if I were to find it. Anytime, anytime I keep the yeah. three sixty and I keep the three sixty because I've got Yeah that run on arcade. I it's like people keep the PS the PS threes because they've got journey on them. Or PT. <laughs> or PT. Yeah. Um, it, it's that same thing it's that same level I think for me uh, and yeah that's that's my number three it's not, it's, it's a game you can spend five minutes or five hours on <laughs> going to decide what track to use for that one yeah Actually, no, no. It Tim, is you're going to decide which track to of... use for that one no you, you, <laughs> yeah. you're just going to have the entire soundtrack playing throughout the background of that <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.